योता प्रविश्य मम वाच मां प्रसुप्ता संजीवय पखिल शक्ति धरा स्वधाना अन्याम सहस्रचरण श्रवण पगादी प्राणा नमो भगवते पुषा तोभ्यम कथाचना स्मृते युस्क सुक भवे विस्मृत विपरीत सी चैतन्य नमा हरे कृष्ण वेलकम बैक टू अवर भागवतम क्लास आई नो यू मै नॉट रिमेम्बर मेनी थिंग्स बिकॉज वी मीटिंग आफ्टर टू वीक्स बट लास्ट टाइम वेन वी एट द क्लास वी स्पोक समथिंग वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट रिगार्डिंग द फोर्थ चैप्टर आई डोंट नो इफ एनी बडी रिमेम्बर्स वी कवर्ड द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ द फोर्थ चैप्टर ऑफ द फर्स्ट कैंटो सो एनी बडी रिमेम्बर वॉट आर द मेन थीम वी डिस्कस लास्ट टाइम culture tradition blending tradition with being relevant as a as a student and teacher of bhagavatam when we are interacting with the society we have to be able to balance tradition being loyal to our tradition and also being relevant to the audience this is the theme we discussed and then we discussed all the four chapter the, the first three chapters six questions which were asked by shonaka rishi was answered by sutta goswami and now new set of questions will be asked basically how many set of questions three first questions will be on bhagavatam history of bhagavatam second will be on the speaker of bhagavatam and third will be on the hearer of bhagavatam and the rest of the first canto till 19 chapter will be an elaboration on these three questions so this is how we began so the first verse was about how the person congratulating the speaker sutta goswami is also qualified so the whole theme was how in a cultured society even the one who is doing comparing even one is a master of ceremonies he is not simply a performer he has to be senior he has to be knowledgeable and uh, he is is a senior knowledgeable and he has he is a worthy of respect so such a person has to take the initiative to welcome the speaker and congratulate the speaker so like that we discuss the finer aspects of krishna conscious culture so the main thing was at the last time we discussed how as devotees of krishna so i'm just spending a little time on that theme of how we will um, we can grow in our krishna consciousness only if we understand how we need to be loyal to our traditional uh, principles bhagavatam bhagavatam is talking about shelter of krishna bhagavatam is talking about respecting others so this has to be internalized otherwise our study of bhagavatam will be a ritual it will be an academic exercise or it will be like a punya you know like you go to temples and you know, you know we, we have these rituals so this this should not be a ritual so bhagavatam wants us to grow in our spiritual life and therefore we have to constantly examine our faith if we live with an if we live with an unexamined faith then which means we don't understand the depth of the scriptures and uh, otherwise we'll just you know mug up so many shlokas you know i have memorized so you also may memorize and bhakti is not about mugging up things it's about reflection it's about applying mm-hmm. and then when a devotee speaks you can know that this is realization like i was hearing one lecture of shila prabhupad he is talking about now narsimha chaturdashi is coming so it's interesting what shila prabhupada is saying i was trying to hear shila prabhupada's lecture and what shila prabhupada is speaking and spontaneously he says certain things you know that oh this is not there in the scripture per se but it is his digested realization of what is there in the scriptures like he's saying uh, you know i was amazed by prabhupada's depth he's saying hiranya kashipu was a cunning gentleman now <laughs> you don't find this cunning word so that's like oh, that's what shila prabhupada has realized like in one place he says so shriman hiranya kashipu i was like shriman he is a demon <laughs> how can you call him shriman but then prabhupada clarifies oh we have to thank hiranya kashipu because of him we got narsimha there <laughs> so ability of a pure devotee to see good even in a demon so what i'm trying to say is when a devotee uh, absorbs himself in bhagavatam and scriptures then what is yours comes out 
like Srila Prabhupada spoke on liquid beauty, you know, which I generally don't speak in a forum like this. That another story you can discuss some other time. But in youth classes, I speak this, and I realize when I'm speaking that story that this is Srila Prabhupada's realization about how a lady was being chased by a lusty man. She wanted to teach him a lesson, so she collected all the ingredients of her body. The way Prabhupada describes, I realize that in a very dramatic way, he's saying that means he has realized that this body is abominable. <laughs> That's what it reveals. It reveals the person's um, mood. Sometimes um, we don't say in Bhagavatam. Now Bhagavatam, we may say, okay, I don't understand some statements or scriptures. So what should I do? Should I just reflect, reflect? No, Bhagavatam is different. In Bhagavatam, when we don't understand, we prayerfully go ahead and we read. And then what happens is later when we come back, we understand. Many times it happens. Like if you read in the first instance, a verse from the eighth canto, na vidyate yas seta janma karma va, na nama rupe guna dosha eva va. Well, Gajendra is saying, oh Lord, you don't have name, you don't have form. He's saying so many things about God. You may think, are you? You may think God doesn't have name, God doesn't have form. You may get confused because we are always talking about Krishna, who has a form, who is a person. But then later on you realize he's talking about material form. He's talking about something material. So like that, we sometimes need to understand that to make it relevant in our lives. And if we don't find it relevant, like for example, right now some of you may not find certain things relevant in your life. That's okay. Just with faith, we continue hearing, reading, and eventually it will make sense. Things fall in first place, you know. Like you know, it's last time we were discussing about um, honoring traditions and also being relevant. Like for example, Ram Bharat Mila. You know, if you're reading ba- uh, Ramayana, like for this Ram Ram, I was reading. It's a long section in the Ramayana, both Valmiki Ramayana and Tulsi Ramayana. It's very beautiful. So when you are speaking that, some people may find it very nourishing. And to make it relevant, you can then contrast it, if you want, with a modern example of some two businessmen brothers who are fighting or who are not cooperating or something like that. So then it makes it, you know, you can connect Ram Bharat Mila to modern context. But if we compromise on the scriptural conclusions to make it exciting and only speak about the modern business story, then we are deviating. Then the forum of Bhagavatam class is not for that. So like that, we uh, so then we can study Bhagavatam slowly and we can go deeper. Like Srila Prabhupada during his last days, one another interesting pastime which convinces us about how we need to go deeper into Bhagavatam. So devotees are surrounding, surrounding him and Srila Shil- Prabhupada asked them, what have you really understood in Krishna consciousness? Devotees were like stunned, you know, somebody said, Krishna is the kind of God. Somebody said, different, different things. The Prophet repeated, what have you really understood in Krishna? So then, devotees said different things. Then the Prophet said, first of all, you have to understand, you are not the body, you are the soul. When I read that, I realized, this is the Prabhupada's realization that I'm not the body and he's speaking about this when his back when his body has become a bag of bones very sick. So he's able to say this with conviction so Srila Prabhupada was sharing with us what he has personally assimilated from the scriptures some of you have spent more than 20 years in Krishna consciousness some of you have spent 5 years 6 years 10 years so you, you can ask yourself what have I really understood in Krishna consciousness Basically, what it means is what is real in Krishna consciousness for you? What is alive in bhakti for you? What is breathing? What is it that gives you life in Krishna consciousness? What is it that, you know, uh, like until we have something in Krishna consciousness which is mine, we can't, uh, we can't survive. Even if you survive, we can't thrive. <laughs> and we will find it very uh, dry. Some, see, there has to be Krishna Sambandha. That is the point. What, what is mine that gives me Sambandha with Bhagavatam, Sambandha with Krishna? If we don't have Krishna Sambandha, then our Bhagavatam study and our Bhakti will be hollow and dry. Bhakti Raksha Sridhar Maharaj's uh, pastime, Madhav Maharaj was sharing that one lady came to him 
the interesting past time just see the perspective how it how it depends on how you see the situation so this lady said maharaj guru maharaj you know i am in chanting hari krishna for 45 years and still you know i am feeling so bad that you know i don't experience the spiritual bliss bhakti is also boring dry what is happening to me i am so bad i feel so depressed it is not working the bhakti doesn't work the process of krishna consciousness is not spiritual what is it i am so confused after hearing her bhakti sir shridhar maharaj gave a very interesting answer he said when lord ram was traveling in the forest he met shabri shabri also was waiting for lord ram for 100 years and she also had not seen the lord but she was chanting waiting chanting waiting but she was happy remembering lord ram she had ram a sambandha so as you are finding it dry in your spiritual practice do you have rama sambandha do you have krishna sambandha then the whole perspective changes so in every situation remembering krishna and turning to krishna is what makes our spiritual life blissful so being grasthas you have enough reasons to be in anxiety <laughs> because you live in a a very tottering platform where you everything depends on you <laughs> externally so you know that it doesn't depend on you you know that everything depends on krishna so you are so you are actually depending on the lord so therefore this krishna sambandha is needed otherwise everything we are doing will become a ritual and rituals eventually make us uh dry it be, it makes it very boring so therefore uh, this is the essence of the first verse that we spoke about that Uh, you know our devotees have given us bhagavatam classes they have taught us journey of self discovery courses they have connected us to krishna so they have done that but now am i taking my krishna sambandha serious now am i taking my relationship with krishna serious and if you are not taking seriously means the chains of material desires are binding us and we are unable to break through the shackles and unable to connect with krishna therefore we need to pray we need to take shelter we need to hear bhagavatam with a prayerful attitude there is this famous uh, anecdote we say that how there was a fire in the zoo and all the animals fled but the elephant did not run away and it got burnt in the fire although there was a very small chain binding the elephant the elephant could have easily broken it but because from childhood the elephant was kind of tuned into think that this chain is what is binding so similarly our material attachments bind us and they prevent us from taking shelter of krishna they give us fear and insecurity so when we come for bhagavatam classes or when we are doing uh, dt worship or when we come to temple those of you who have done dt worship you know that we do bhuta shuddhi manas shuddhi we just don't go and dress the deities before entering the altar we offer prayers and we you know we purify our mind we remember the lord we offer many prayers almost 25 minutes goes in that and then we enter the altar so similarly we purify our consciousness before we begin the day by remembering krishna praying to krishna so all this studying of bhagavatam all of this is part of the same package of improving our sambandha with the lord improving our relationship with the lord just like if you don't spend time with your spouse let's take a simple example your relationship with your spouse will be fun. there is no there is no two opinions on that quality time and quantity time is needed similarly we need to spend time with krishna or else our relationship with krishna will get adversely affected so therefore the first verse this was the main essence of connecting with krishna now we we'll go to the second verse and uh, can please repeat after me all of you have access to the bhagavatam first canto fourth chapter text number 2 shaunaka uvacha suta suta mahabhaga vadano vadatambara katam bhagavatim punyam yadaha bhagavan shuka Mm-hmm. <coughs> 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 
please relate the pious message of Srimad Bhagavatam, which, uh, which was spoken by the great and powerful sage Shukdev Goswami. So he's saying, Oh, Sutta Goswami. So can you read the purport? I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. I think you'll have to read the whole paragraph. It's very interesting. Loudly you'll have to read. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I great joy because the members of the assembly were eager to hear the text of Bhagavad by Shukdev Goswami. They were not interested in hearing it from Buddhist Goswami. his own way to suit. So called Bhagavatam recitals are either professional leaders. Or so called learned in person. Not enter into the transcendental perspective. In person, there is precedent. This explains the most confidential part of the Lord's process. Neither of these reciters are bona fide persons to recite Bhakti. Only one who is prepared to present Bhagavad in the light of Shukdev Goswami, and only those who are prepared to hear Shukdev Goswami and will present the Bhagavad. Thank you. So, this is a very nice purport. You know, how it begins, the verse begins with the words Shonakarishi is saying, What? Suta Suta Mahabhaga. You could have said, Oh, Suta Goswami, tell about Bhagavad, but he's saying Suta Suta twice. If I say Rajan Prabhu, Rajan Prabhu, <laughs> that means I'm excited. <laughs> right? If I, if I call out your name twice, that means I'm super excited. Like, oh, no, I want to say something eager. So now they are saying, uh, uh, Sanakarishi is saying, oh, Suta Suta, you know, please tell, please tell about Bhagavad. This is a glimpse we are getting of some spiritual excitement. And he's saying, Suta Suta Mahabhaga, you are most fortunate. And now he's asking uh, the questions, he's asking about, he's going to ask questions to Sutta Goswami about the speaker, Sukadev Goswami, about the hearer, Parikshit Maharaj, and about Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> and here he's asking about Srimad Bhagavatam. Mishila Prabhupada says in the purport that Bhagavatam should be, we should be aware of two kinds of people when we are studying Bhagavatam. One is impersonalist, and second is professional speakers. Impersonalist means... Uh, you know, they speak on Bhagavatam, but their conclusion is Krishna doesn't exist or Krishna doesn't have form. And that's very painful for a devotee of Krishna. So they don't believe, you know, they, they, devotees can't take it when uh, people speak on Bhagavatam and say, ultimately, God has no form, Krishna is, doesn't exist, or Krishna form is temporary, because that is not correct. And by saying that, it is like, you know, somebody, you love your parent, and somebody says your parent doesn't exist, or somebody criticizes your parent, you feel offended. So, God, absolute truth, we discussed in one of our classes, has three aspects, impersonal aspect also, and personal aspect also, and the localized aspect also. So, those who glorify the impersonal aspect, that is okay, but to deny the personal aspect, then they become disqualified from speaking Srimad Bhagavad. They can be attached to their impersonal aspect, that is a part of spiritual life. Brahman, Brahman is impersonal, Niraka. So Niraka is one of the aspects of the absolute truth, which is okay. But you can't speak on Bhagavatam and glorify Niraka. Then you are offending Bhagavatam, because Bhagavatam is glorification of the personality. So this is the first kind of speakers we should beware of when we are studying Bhagavatam. And second is professional speakers who charge lakhs of rupees and you know who entertain. Uh, they are not against entertainment, don't, don't get me wrong. Because uh, entertainment, you know, some people can entertain the audience and speak Bhagavatam, that is very good. But the problem is, in the name of the professional speakers, what they do many times is that when they're entertaining the audiences and they're charging a heavy sum, they are not giving anything higher. That is a problem. And we can't charge money for Bhagavatam because then we are making business with Krishna. So that is not the mood of our parampara. Therefore, this is the main essence of this purport that, you know, that there, is, there has to be eagerness to hear and eagerness to speak. And it is not uh, Hare Krishna. I'm getting a message here that, um, okay, somebody has to mute because these others are getting disturbed. Hare Krishna. 
so just like you know just like when we surrender when we talk about surrender there are three objects one is the object of surrender krishna second is the person who surrenders and third is the process of surrender similarly when we are studying bhagavatam we have three things one is the speaker of bhagavatam second is the hearer and there is the process of hearing and the process of hearing is enthusiasm and eagerness which is what you all have you are coming every week day every week on a tuesday so the emotion here is of joy and excitement it is very high and therefore he is saying twice uh to the futa mahabhaga and then he is saying also another interesting sentence here is kat katam bhagavatam punyam he is saying reading bhagavatam is punya punya is you know pious activity hum log usko punya kaam karna hai na but here very really important shila prabhupad clarifies it is not ordinary punya this is spiritual punya kuch log punya kaam karte hain you know on that uh, certain time of the year they will give charity they will do the certain things punya milega par bhagavatam padhne se alag type ka punya milega what is the meaning of spiritual punya you will get spiritual credit which means you will eventually develop enough account you know enough deposits in your spiritual account by which you will develop love for krishna so therefore this is very very important and therefore he is saying mahabhaga proper says we can become from abhaga we can become mahabhaga abhaga unfortunate mahabhaga is most fortunate we are abhaga when we hear bhagavatam from impersonalists or from professional speakers so if we are hearing from impersonalists or professional speakers then we can become mahabhaga by giving up that and by studying shri prabhupada's purports or those who are in proper parampara hmm? so because you know bhagavatam shri prabhupada had written the first two cantos just put everything in the everything he had because he wanted to go to america to preach and he wanted to take some books with him he didn't want to go alone so he whatever he had he invested and shrimad bhagavatam is compared to krishna's body just like when we take darshan we first see krishna's lotus feet darshan kaise lete hain bhagwan ka pehle lotus feet se upar ja ke fir bhagwan ka darshan similarly when we are reading bhagavatam first canto and the second canto is compared to the two lotus feet of krishna so the first two cantos when we are studying we are actually worshiping krishna systematically so therefore you have come for the first canto of bhagavatam class so we can be joyful excited prayerful of course again a clarification shri prabhupada said many times it, there is no discrimination it is not that if you like ajamil kant which is in sixth canto or i like pralad maras prayers in seventh canto it's not that oh i should not read it till i finish first six cantos mm-hmm. no prabhupada said that bhagavatam is like sugar candy anywhere you taste that sugar candy it is sweet right a chocolate cake okay modern example <laughs> anywhere in the chocolate cake that is sweet hmm? so similarly bhagavatam everywhere it is sweet it is not that you have to read only from first or second canto but that is the way we just like when we take darshan how we take darshan i don't know how you take we have heard many times you take systematic lotus feet when darshan opened at 745 how i take darshan is i just look at my favorite whatever you know dt is dress and i celebrate that moment for a few seconds and then after offering obeisances we get up and then go through the systematic process so both can be there spontaneity and systematic uh, so similarly in bhagavatam study also whatever nourishes you you can study at the same time follow the process both can go on simultaneously so therefore this is important uh, <clears throat> we will all have our favorites and that is okay like when you, as you study bhagavatam as you come for temp, temp, temple classes and you hear you will develop your favorite sections and that's perfectly okay Once, <clears throat> but we should have this we should have this ability to honor understand that bhagavatam is worshipable and sacred and if somebody is teaching us systematically and we also have the ability to study systematically we should do that one shila prabhupad was uh, taking rest in the night he had a ritual you know not a ritual he had a practice of taking milk warm milk so when you take this warm milk his servant shutakirti prabhu would read from krishna book so one day he was reading vivida gorilla pastime now for those of you who don't know one of the pastimes one of the demons that balram and krishna kill and that vivida gorilla pastime you know it's little you know that vivida gorilla make some sound and then it's like it's not really funny but shila prabhu started laughing when he heard how balram killed and we, and shutakirti prabhu realized that oh, prabhu has entered that space he has entered that you know krishna's world so it's just like you know you go watching an ipl match and your favorite team is winning you will start jumping some you know you will be start pumping your face in the air like that that's what people do right 
it was like prabhupa's favorite player is winning <laughs> balram is winning <laughs> so shila prabhu got excited and he said yes oh and he started laughing and he was laughing at dubida gorilla's antics so shrutakirti prabhu saw wow he's so absorbed and he's so happy and shila prabhu laughed and then as he was drinking milk he was laughing he kept laughing for a long time that how balram killed dubida now dubida was so stupid or whatever but then prabhu went to sleep he took rest so next day again when prabhu was taking milk so shrutakirti prabhu thought i should read something similarly something you know he said he spent some time searching for something funny so that shila prabhupad can again laugh today and he can be happy so shila prabhupad is drinking milk and is waiting for him to read but nothing he is not reading he is just searching for the past time shila prabhupad said what happened he said prabhupad i am searching for you know something funny <laughs> shila prabhupad said read anything krishna book everything about krishna is wonderful everything about krishna book is beautiful don't discriminate read any past time any chapter now that is a pure devotee we are not like that so we need we have our favorites that's okay <laughs> but uh, we need to understand that eventually we need to see everything is non different hmm. so what has happened so far in the bhagavatam fourth chapter the first two verses the speaker has been glorified and now that remember there are three questions going to be asked about bhagavatam speaker and the hearer now the bhagavatam question is going to be asked is it okay first two verses are clear congratulating the speaker and now the third verse is very very interesting it is one of first of the three questions that are going to be asked so we can please repeat after me verse 3 kasmin yuge pravrutte yam kasmin yuge pravrutte yam stane vake na hetuna stane vake na hetuna कुत संचोदित कृष्ण कृतवान्ता मुनी the question is about bhagavatam when was the bhagavatam spoken from where did uh, vyas dev get inspiration so after this questions end in the 12th verse from 13th verse onwards the rest of the chapter will be an answer to this question and then remaining chapters will be answer to the other questions that is going to be asked hmm? so here the question is asked intelligent shila prabhu says in the purport that question should be relevant and intelligent hmm? so shila prabhu writes uh, Uh, basically now you will see <clears throat> about bhagavatam the you know going into deep about bhagavatam when we read the fifth chapter of bhagavatam came how vyasdev was despondent that's a very interesting section hmm? sukhdev goswami uh, was speaking bhagavatam and uh, in that audience of that bhagavatam class was sukhdev goswami's father vyasdev and vyasdev's uh, spiritual master was also there narad muni and shukdev goswami was speaking bhagavatam for the first time it's, it's a very very if you enter that space you realize what a what a what an occasion that must have been a young 16 year old boy is giving bhagavatam class imagine in the temple hall a young 16 year old boy gives his class for the first time and in the audience the spiritual master is sitting and prabhupada is also sitting <laughs> how will you know, and shukdev goswami doesn't is not awkward he's not feeling awkward we will be so conscious but he is because he is absorbed in krishna and not only these three personalities sages who are thousands of years old and elder they were also there so this is very very interesting so the second uh, so this is the first question asked about bhagavatam which we will answer later but he asks all the three questions together so now the text 4 verse 4 which we will take now is a question about the speaker of the bhagavat and who is the speaker of bhagavatam shukdev goswami so let us see what is this fourth verse तस्य पुत्रो महायोगी समुद्रेकोड़ो मूड इवेयते
whose mind was always concentrated in monism. He was transcendental to mundane activity, but being unexposed, he appeared like an ignorant person. So now he is now going to speak about the speaker of Pavatam Shukde Goswami. Who is that uh, putra of Yasdev? Tasya putro Mahayogi. Mahayogi means he was a great devotee. Samadra means he was equibalanced, equipoised. And Nirvikalpaka, he was a monoist. He was absorbed in impersonal liberation at one point of time. And Ekanta Matir, his mind was concentrated completely. And Unnidro, un Nidra means sleep. Unnidro means one who is transcendental to mundane activities. He is not interested in ordinary activities of this world. And very interesting last line. Gudo Muda Iveyate. Guda Muda Iveyate means he was unexposed, he appeared like an ignorant person. Means he was so advanced spiritually, but he presented himself as, you know, as if he is a madman, as if he doesn't know anything. This is a very interesting thing. You can read the purport uh, from the section where Srila Prabhupada writes, Sukhdev Goswami was a liberated soul. I think that's the first sentence, right? You can read that loudly. Srila Sukhdev Goswami, so Goswami was a liberated soul and thus he remained always alert not to be trapped by the illusory energy. Okay, stop here. The first sentence is very interesting. I'll, I'll repeat it. Shukdev Goswami was a liberated soul and thus he remained always alert not to be trapped by the illusory energy. That means even a liberated soul is alert. So if a liberated soul is alert, how much more alert you and I should be? <laughs> Interesting sentence, no? You can read this uh, further, the purport. In the, in the Bhagavad Gita, this alertness is very lucidly explained. The liberated soul and the conditioned soul have different engagements. The liberated soul is always engaged in the progressive path of spiritual attainment, which is something like a dream for conditioned soul. The conditioned soul cannot imagine the actual engagements of the liberated soul. While the conditioned soul thus dreams about spiritual engagements, the liberated soul is awake. Similarly, the engagement of the conditioned soul appear, appears to be a dream for the liberated soul. The conditioned soul and the liberated soul may apparently be on the same platform, but factually they are differently engaged and their attention is always alert either in sense enjoyment or in self-realization. The conditioned soul is absorbed in the matter, whereas the liberated soul is completely indifferent to matter. This indifference is explained as... So there are two kinds of people. One is liberated and one is conditioned. So we are called conditioned souls because, you know, we can't... We are conditioned. We like, you know, like for example, when you go in the road, when you're driving in, driving your car, you'll see a lot of speed breakers. So you are conditioned. You can't just drive at any speed anywhere you want. Similarly, here in this material world, we can't just 24 hours remember Krishna. We are conditioned. Our body, our mind, our responsibilities. You know, we are kind of trapped. So we are conditioned soul. Liberated soul means he's completely free. You know, he has. It's like, it's like driving on uh, that autobahn, no? Germany. Mm -hmm. Just no speed limit. Just going mad. Just drive full speed. The so liberated soul has no now nothing to stop him from loving Krishna. He is just remembering Krishna. He must be like that. Yeah. <laughs> he is fully absorbed in Krishna. Now, Prabhupada is saying both conditioned soul and liberated soul, both are alert. So the, the conditioned soul is alert, but he is thinking of sense gratification. But the liberated soul is alert, but he is thinking of serving Krishna. So and the first sentence was so striking that he is liberated soul and he is alert about the illusory energy. That means what? That means to fight an enemy. Look, let's take a simple example of this world. When a soldier has to fight an enemy, he needs three things. He needs the knowledge. He needs to, first of all, have weapons. AK-47, bombs. Now, you may have weapons, but you need second thing also. You need training. He needs knowledge about using them also. Okay. He has weapons also. And he has knowledge also. But if he's not alert, then the enemy will shoot him. I think some time ago, some soldiers were going in the van. 
i think uh, crpf jawans are going now it's not their fault I mean, they were ambushed they had the weapons they had knowledge but it's not that they were not alert it's just that you know they were not alert in the sense they were in the vehicle so so if you want to successfully fight an enemy you need knowledge you need to have weapons and you also need to be alert all three are needed so we have weapons to fight the illusory energy and become liberated soul what weapons we have we have bhagavatam we have dt worship we have temple right we have association of devotees we have krishna prasad these are all weapons to fight against the illusory energy and become a liberated soul now although we have this many of us don't know how to associate with devotees many of us don't know how to study bhagavatam many of us don't know how to chant hare krishna so we need training so we have seminars we have classes we have holy name seminar where the speaker says okay there are three p's of chanting posture pronunciation and prayerful mood <laughs> and how to study bhagavatam there are three techniques you know r r r <laughs> like that so the devotees give all this training how to how to use the weapons that we have so many devotees come to hare krishna and they understand what the weapons are they are acquainted with ak47 the bombs the brahmo missile sab samajh gaya and they also get training rigorously for many years and with all that training and with all that weapons they are sleeping <laughs> then they are attacked by the illusory energy so we have to be alert of all three are needed so therefore <clears throat> therefore uh, propat says in the purport that one is absorbed in sense that it is always alert he is always thinking how i can enjoy acha kahan pe naya food chain aaya hai acha kaun sa naya restaurant aaya hai kaun sa naya movie aaya hai acha what is trending so he is alert so devotee is also alert you know acha ye sanyasi aaye mandir mein ek class hai acha ye chal raha hai is alert he wants to know how to get more mercy how to come closer to krishna so propak quotes this famous verse in the bhagavad gita there is a very famous verse which describes this mentality yanisha sarva bhutana what is sleep what is night for all living entities tasyam jagrati sayam that is day time for devotee and tasyam jagrati bhutana and what is day time for ordinary people sanisha pashyato mune the liberated soul is sleeping at that time you can see you know many devotees they get up early 3 334 and that is the time after a hard party people go to sleep <laughs> and 8 to 8 30 our devotees go to sleep that's when party begins for many people so you can see what is night for the self realized is different for the materialist so this is there i remember once on a mangalarti we have mangalarti at 5 o'clock in the morning so there is one one person who comes to temple occasionally and i know him quite well and i was surprised to see him in mangalarti i said wow and then i met him i after the tulsi arti i called him aside i gave him some mahaprasad i said thank you you got up so early and you came for mangalarti and then he kind of very sheepishly he said prabhu ji kya hai then i realized it was first january <laughs> so what had happened was 31st party had gone up he said The party got over at four o'clock. Then I was going home. I was probably were driving. I thought, "Abi four o'clock ho gaya to thoda abhi four thirty mandir kahan jaate?" So I thought, "Might as well attend the Bangla and then go home and sleep." <laughs> so like that, you know. So, uh, so every basically everyone is alert. So a devotee is alert to serve, and a materialistic person is alert to enjoy. See, sometimes many times they are alert. You know how I can enjoy. What what is there for the menu? <laughs> sometimes we ask, you know. आज क्या मेनू है पार्टी आज क्या फीस है एंड सम डेवोटेड आर ऑलवेज अलर्ट टू सर्व हो कैन आई कम क्लोजर टू कृष्ण ये व्हाट देयर वाज अ क्लास टुडे आई मिस द क्लास व्हाट वाज स्पोकन इन द क्लास अच्छा ये क्या पॉइंट बोला अच्छा ओ आई मिस्ड इट ओके व्हाट इज अदर पॉइंट दैट वाज स्पोकन इन द क्लास सो व्हेन वी शेयर व्हाट वी हर्ड इन द क्लास वी आर शोइंग आवर अलर्टनेस इन स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ सो अलर्टनेस एवरीबॉडी इज हैविंग सो शिला प्रपद राइट्स इन वन प्लेस that krishna consciousness means conscious of krishna and cautious of maya now you can repeat this sentence i'll just say krishna consciousness means you can conscious of krishna conscious of krishna and cautious of maya and cautious of maya not conscious of maya and cautious of krishna <laughs> mm-hmm. so here 
Srila Prabhupada is uh, in the purport talking about Mahayogi. Who is a Mahayogi in this section? Shukde Goswami. And Srila Prabhupada is contrasting Mahayogi, Shukde Goswami with sense gratifiers, who are also called as Mahabhogi in Sanskrit. So Mahabhogi versus Mahayogi. Both are alert. Mahayogi, like Shukde Goswami, is alert in Krishna. And next verse, sometimes you know, devotees think, you know, I am also very alert in Krishna consciousness and chanting very well. Next verse, when we read, that will completely smash our illusion that we are advanced and we are absorbed in Krishna because then we will see the level of Shukde Goswami, what kind of alertness or what kind of absorption he had in Krishna is mind blowing. But in this verse, what I like the most was the last line Gudo Muda Iveyate. Although he was so absorbed in Krishna, he presented himself as somebody, somebody doesn't know anything. But he was. One of the most amazing qualities in Krishna consciousness is a self-effacing quality. But please listen to this. This is a life-changing moment for you if you understand this. Self-efface efface means mitadena, erase. So in, when a devotee advances in Krishna consciousness, he or she self-effacing. I am not important. That doesn't mean we, have, we lack self-respect or we, have, we lack self-worth. It's just that there is a higher connection by which you are not um, too attached to this world. Shukde Goswami is very special and his glories are revealed here. But the best part is just concealed his real position, which means a real devotee, a real Mahayogi will never reveal that he's advanced. That is a point. He will not go around telling, you know, I'm so advanced. He will not post on the Facebook <laughs> and, you know, Twitter about his... Uh, he'll keep a low profile, this. But for service, he may do. Because sometimes some devotees have to do it for service, to, as a preaching service. But their internal mood is, it's not about me. See, in material world, it's exactly opposite. We have little qualification. And what we do in our biodata CV is we fluff it up. And we write so many things about some remote project you did for somewhere. And then you, oh, you know. So, so we, we glorify ourselves a lot in material world. So this... But this is not a spiritual qualification. In spiritual qualification, uh, it is it's actually self-effacing. He may have a lot of qualities, a devotee, but he will uh, not broadcast it. Because devotees, you know, they are very sensitive. They are very perceptive. They will be like, what are you saying, you know? You can't fool them. And if you glorify your qualities to non-devotees, they become envious. And devotees feel sorry for you. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't pay to glorify ourselves. So better be self-effacing. See, uh, basically what I mean by self-effacing, what Shukdev Goswami's quality is, guda muda ivayate, not revealing a glory, basically being modest. See, it's not, a, it's not only a spiritual uh, yogis who are modest. I've seen even so-called, in this world also successful people are modest and humble. I mean, it's not something, it's not a big thing we are talking about. Like, I remember, uh, I stopped cricket for 20 years ago, but when I was a young boy, I grew up same age, Sachin Tendulkar was same age. So he was also growing up. So one of the things that really attracted me to him was he was very modest. So when he would be called for the man of the match award ceremony and he would be given the award and he would be glorified, he would spontaneously say, well, I was lucky, team did well. <laughs> And I would say, how can he not, you know, be beaming and yes, I did it. So that was very attractive. I, I think we all find, you know, when we see people who are very modest, that attracts us more. I don't know if it's, it happens with you. Many times um, it happens like that. Like in the Ramayana, we see Mother Sita, she's apologizing to Anuman. She's saying, you know, I called you a monkey. You know, after that entire conversation, she says that, you know, uh, I... I didn't recognize you and I panicked and uh, you were so nice and she glorifies him. So Anuman's reply is very interesting there. He says, my dear mother, you don't, see, you heard what you had to hear because she had not seen Anuman and initially she was suspecting, who is it? So then Anuman says one sentence, that verse I don't remember. He says, mother, you heard what you had to hear and you didn't see what you didn't have to see. 
that means you didn't you don't have to see me you heard the message of ram so that's a very natural modesty and self effacing quality of hanuman that comes out see basically why why a devotee is like that there's a psychology behind it. a devotee knows that he is insignificant and this is the secret of being peaceful in life our problem is we you know we think you know i am the center of the world see devotee uh, Uh, one who sincerely practicing spiritual life knows that everything erases out eventually, everything wipes out. So why do I have to show off? Everything, you know, like for example, let's say you have a big house. Eventually, that house will be house will go away. You will go away. The house may remain. Mm-hmm. I was in Udupi for eight months. I saw one of our neighbor's uh, houses. I grew up, you know, playing in that courtyard of that house, and eventually the owners died. Lot of time passed, and I could see over the years that house dwindling. You know, eventually it has now become like you can't make out that there was a house there. It happens everywhere, right? Even the Taj Mahal will one day become dust. So, so the point is, um, everything goes away. So why do I have to broadcast myself? I may have a beautiful body, but Bhagavatam says you may have the most beautiful body, but one day it will become one of the three things. What? either ashes or earth or stool ashes because the hindus they burn the body it becomes ashes and other religions they bury the body so it becomes mixes with the earth and in some religions they throw it for the birds to feast on your body and the birds they eat it and then they pass stool so your that's your body <laughs> so we may become so bhagavatam is bhagavatam doesn't flatter you so why are you showing off why are you glorifying yourself So a pure devotee like Shukdev Goswami is aligned to this reality. He is completely, you know, they, he, he is not. He is deeply convinced. I am nobody, and Krishna is everything. Now, uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu he asked Haridas Thakur uh, that, you know, how are you? He was discussing with him, and Haridas Thakur was about to leave this world, and Haridas Thakur said, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, you can't die. What will happen to me? And Harda Sakur says, "A kita mari gela." He says, "If an insignificant ant dies, what harm will happen to planet Earth?" And he is Harda Sakur is like the greatest chanter of holy name. There is nobody who has chanted Hare Krishna like him. And he is thinking like, I mean, what is the what is the big deal? You know, if I die. <laughs> so this is a very important verse, therefore, where Shukdev Goswami's quality is revealed that gudo muda iveyate. You know, in this world, people have little qualification. They present it as if, you know, uh, this world is all about you know over promise and under deliver. You see the advertisements; they promise a lot, but Krishna consciousness, you know, we prefer to under promise and over deliver. You know, take care, Prabhu. Shaya sa hoga, and then we give more. <laughs> the person is happy. And and in and in spiritual uh, circles I have seen when devotees are self-effacing, they become very attractive. I have some very close friends, the people I am living with, like one one brahmachari in our ashram. You know, he was a topper in IIT, but nobody knows about it. And not only a topper, he used to get nine point five, nine point six in his GPA, that the scores. And he had a standing offer from MIT, Harvard, and is like, and you know, he gives very simple classes when he is told to give class. He speaks like only pure katha, no masala, no entertainment. He'll just pick up Chaitanya Charitamrita and he'll just speak the stories for his own relishment. And in between, he cracks some spontaneous jokes and he's laughing and he's in his own world. And I just look at him and I say, this guy is really he's like Shukdev Goswami, absorbed in Krishna. He has nothing to do with the world, and he's not a he's not a naive fool, you know. He's also serving his spiritual master for last many many years, the personal servant of Maharaj, and his only name is Radha Swami Maharaj. Doesn't keep a servant for more than one year, one or maximum two years. But this guy has been a servant for more than sixteen years now. <laughs> Mara likes him because he's self-effacing. He's never, he never pushes himself. At the at the same time, the seva is done. So he's so attractive, and he's not naive. He's so smart. He knows what has to be done. You know, he's alert in his service. But externally, you will never know if you are not told about him. You will never know that he's so well qualified and he's so intelligent. And that's. And he is blissful. 
दुनिया का सर्टिफिकेट थोड़ी चाहिए उसको उसको कृष्ण का ही इज गेटिंग कृष्णा एम्ब्रेस तो उसमें वो मजा ले रहा है दुनिया उसको देखे नहीं देखे उसको फर्क नहीं पड़ उसको आईएस रिटर्न मिल रहा है एंड यू नो वन वेरी बिग इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट वेरी वेरी बिग मैन इज वर्थ थाउजेंड्स एंड थाउजेंड्स ऑफ क्रोर्स ही समटाइम्स कम्स टू टेम्पल एंड ही लुक्स ही लुक्स फॉर हिम and he makes him sit and he tells him tell me about krishna and this fellow also very coolly speaks about krishna kada <laughs> but that guy doesn't give any donation to temple and we also never ask him although he has lots of money and he catches this brahmachari and talks to him for hours par krishna kada karo ara kitne acche ho and then one day he told him kuch bhi zarurat hai na mere ko mangna kuch bhi main de dunga <laughs> so one, so then then he came and we were sitting in the ashram and he came and said और ऐसा बोला उन्होंने कुछ भी मांगो तो मैंने कहा अच्छा तो फिर मांगो <laughs> तो फिर उसको मालूम है उनको उनको मालूम है कि तुम नहीं मांगेगा इसलिए इसलिए डिफरेंट पर्सनैलिटीज सम पीपल आर Uh, they like to sing. They like to perform. I'm just saying here they are focusing on Sukhdev Goswami's quality. Abi, abi, unko zoom, unko par zoom kar rahe hain, and we are glorifying it. Tomorrow when we glorify Pundari Vidya Nidhi, we'll talk about how he used to put sands and he used to sing and he used to. That is another quality. We'll discuss some other time. But this inner spirit of being detached from worldly fame is very attractive. And this is just one example I am giving. But there are many because devotees are generally like that. because they want krishna they want to experience krishna and whatever comes in way they reject it. like i know this uh, one family i knew them for many years because we grew up in the same colony and my father was close friend of this prabhu he is much older to my father but they were very close friends and my mother was close uh, to uh, prabhu ji's that prabhu ji's wife so i grew up looking at mataji and then since last so many years i know her i always seen her speak to me in traditional you know she is from a traditional marwadi family she speaks hindi very nice and just recently i one day asked her mataji aap pehle kya karti thi main school mein sikhati thi main kya sikhati thi english english <laughs> kabhi aap se ek ek sentence nahi suna and then she spoke fluently <laughs> i said in india you know maharaj writes in journey home book that people know little bit of english they show off so much and and then told and then I spoke about her in a bhagavatam class <laughs> then she called me and she got are mere bare mein kyon bola so she she felt very uncomfortable like they have i have one very very close brahmachari friend he has studied sanskrit for uh, 14 years now and he studied so hard so deeply that he went away from temple he stayed with his mother in a village and studied for 14 years rigorous he can speak understand directly read scripture we don't need any interpretation any commentaries very deeply absorbed but if you if he sits next to you and talks to you you will never know that he knows this. and when he gives bhagavatam classes you will never realize that he is a sanskrit pandit he is so conscious he is so naturally humble like recently yeah. he gave bhagavatam class last week because i am his close friend i have known him for more than 20 years afterwards i joke i said and he spoke very logical very relevant examples never once you know he could easily dissect a word and then break it up and explain what it means nothing he just spoke the philosophy explained what the, what is there in the sanskrit was in an english language the audience could understand so nobody goes back thinking wow he is so intelligent wow he is a sanskrit scholar he doesn't want to show the world that he is a sanskrit scholar but today in the morning i i, I shamanan to when he was discussing about some aspect he was talking to us very technically and he was explaining but that is because that is the needed at that time so i what i'm trying to say is devotees they they don't they, they have a desire to uh serve see they basically they live with grace and dignity they don't want to kind of show off their own qualities see because they know that ultimately i am an insignificant statistic i i mean nothing to this world to kya is duniya mein jhanda ghad ke kya karna hai where are all the heroes of Yesterday, you know, past. Where have they gone? So now, of course, I want to clarify a very important thing here. I'll just end with this because we started late. I'm just ending. I'm taking. I'm taking the liberty of five minutes extra. Uh, uh, 
see some of us may have a desire to speak some of us may have a desire to preach so what do we do then are we showing off if you have an urge to you know speak and preach there are two things we need to have a blessings of some senior devotees in our attempts to go out and broadcast the messages you know some people are very good in performing they have like millions of followers we should know that they have taken blessings of their seniors and secondly what is the inner mood inner mood is to spread the message and some people you know they they understand the message only if i speak it in a certain way <laughs> only if i speak about my stories and if i am you know i have perform quote and unquote perform so then for them we might do that but inner mood is uh, i want to contribute you know and so first is are you empowered are you blessed and second that means are you approved of what you are doing and secondly are we doing it because i am blowing my own trumpet or do i have a need to actually make a contribution do i want to make a different do i want to bring light to this world you know do i want to be a messenger of you know krishna consciousness if that is the primary mood then it is okay koi aap ga ke karega koi drama karega koi you know lecture dega because if you don't use your talent then you will get frustrated bhagavad gita says nigraham kim karishyasi aap sapres daba ke rakhenge to aapko pagal kar dega so some some of us like to preach then you should preach but the why is important why are you doing it is important like if somebody says no no you know i like to preach but i will be self oh, artificially nahi kar sakta karo jo karna hai aur thoda wo show off bhi kiya to karo but then you come and beg forgiveness <laughs> and have somebody above you who can who go to who can pull your ears prabhu ji thoda aaj mai lecture mein aisa bol diya ha theek hai theek hai ab jaake you know <laughs> do the menial seva basically as long as we are अंडर समवन किसी के आश्रय में हम हैं तो हम अपना नेचर को एंगेज कर सकते वैरायटी और सब लोग शांति से बोलेंगे प्यार से धीरे से देन वी नीड वी नीड वैरायटी यू नो वी नीड समबडी लाइक संकीर्तन प्रभु आल्सो बिकॉज व्हेन यू जस्ट सी यू फील पीसफुल यार लाइफ में कोई टेंशन ही नहीं है वी नीड समबडी लाइक गौर गोपाल प्रभु ऑल्सो हाईली एनिमेटेड and we need gorang prabhu scriptural we need all kinds of variety of people we need like shamanand prabhu who will give so much logic and analysis and and you are wondering what are the main point <laughs> he will give many things he will give many things you know so that is also needed he will give abstract concepts so the point is variety of krishna consciousness man we cannot we cannot judge others character based on what they are doing that's very important oh he is not like sugay go some no no internally you don't know what is his mood we can't judge others he hamare liye apne liye hai but in this world you know basically don't uh, uh, don't suppress your natural talent but it's a fact when we are internally anchored na we become attractive like dr abdul kalam the former president of india so, see so, some spontaneous incidents you know when he was called for uh, this convocation ceremony in i think one of the iits so when he went to the dais the stage there were three chairs kept for the vice chancellor of the university and the dean and abdul kalam in the center and his chair was little different from everyone it was like huge chair so when he went there spontaneously he felt a little awkward his center is uh, chair in the center is like big and other chair so immediately he asked the vice chancellor to sit there it's not that he it was not planned it suddenly happened and the vice chancellor obviously he will not want to sit in that chair and he asked the dean wo bhi nahi beta koi nahi beta so then he he felt very reluctant So then they brought another chair, which was of the same type. So these are all very small things, but they, you know, like when MS Dhoni led India to win the World Cup, many people said, "Now I had not seen that match, but many of my friends who I preached to do programs and they love MS Dhoni, and they said probably we liked him because he was so self-effacing after that victory. He was not like you know he was allowing others to express." I, i don't know the details i am sure everybody has their version but that self effacing quality is important because abhi aaj ke zamane mein who are the stars today like you know it some years ago in 1930s and 1940s one lady was very popular when bollywood was just beginning there was one lady called manorama when she died in 2008 
only three or four people came for her funeral. And my uncle, who was an avid movie goer, he was 84 or something at that time. I told him, Manorama passed away. He said, Mano, what? He also didn't remember. He must have seen her exploits. So Manorama, today who is famous? And where will that person be? In the stage, you know, in the stage, in that stage where we are performing, as the curtain closes and the curtain opens, new actors come and perform. And the older ones are behind the curtains, nursing the wounds that has been caused by time. <laughs> they try to heal those wounds. So, I'm constantly doing that. I'm trying to impress someone. But the actor, actress, people forget. So, therefore, uh, it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So, therefore, it's not worth it. I would like to end with one small incident which convinced me of this principle, although it's an intellectual conviction. I hope I can also experience it in my heart. When I was a young boy, I grew up in uh, South Bombay here at Cuff Parade. So for many years we were there and there is a tennis, uh, MSLT, tennis uh, academy there and I used to go there. And I also used to follow cricket a lot. So there was one cricket player we must be knowing, Sunil Gavaskar. He was very famous not only for cricket at that time, he was also a very good writer and I used to read a lot of his books and articles. And one day, I, and my room was dedicated to him. In my, in my house, my entire room was filled with his photos and, you know, uh, his articles and his posters. And one day, I was coming out of the MSCT, I saw him. I said, hurry. So what happens, you know, subconsciously, when you love someone and you think about someone so much, you think subconsciously, maybe he also knows me. <laughs> Somewhere you may think like that. So I went to him running as if, you know, as if he's my pal and he knows me well. For him, I was like nobody. That was such a disappointment. And then I, I said, I'm your fan. I started blabbering so many. I was what, 13 or 14 at that time. That impression, teenage impression is very strong, you know. So when I, I, when I told him, uh, and he was like looking here and there. He was not interested in me. And out of service, you know, we have a service attitude to whom you love. I said, you're looking for something, but I'm looking for a taxi. I'll get a taxi. You know, so my my mera, mera ishtude, bhagwan <laughs> So I ran to get a taxi. And by the time I got a taxi, I saw him. He, sit, he sat on another, another taxi and he was like, gone. <laughs> and I kept looking at him and I kept looking at the taxi. Gaya, 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 gaya. To the end of me, it was, you know, after a couple of signals, there's a long uh, road. My MS will take a side. It's a long road. 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 I kept looking. He's gone, gone, gone. And then when he left, I realized, oh my God, I'm lost. I mean, I mean, nothing to him. I'm an insignificant statistic. And I was thinking I'm somebody important and special just because I'm reading all his books. But I meant nothing to him. And that remained in my... Of course, I'm a young boy. I moved on. But somewhere, you are nobody. But best part of when I came to Krishna consciousness, I realized he's also nobody. <laughs> but but then after chanting Hare Krishna for some time I realized actually we are all special. Krishna loves us. See, a devotee doesn't he doesn't have he doesn't a devotee when he is self-effacing doesn't mean he is uh, he doesn't consider him himself as of no worth. He knows that he is dear to Krishna. And he can serve Krishna in a unique way. So he loves himself. Self-love is not conspicuous. It's not obvious. But self-love is there. Every devotee is who is absorbed in Krishna, he has self-respect. He, he, he knows that he belongs to Krishna. So he will not harm himself. You will not say that, you know, Ki are my useless. Mar jao. Aisa Khushi se rahega, I belong to Krishna. I have a purpose. So therefore, this is the way we understand that everything, like Shukdev Goswami is teaching us, Buda Muda Iveyate. You may have a lot of devotional qualities, but Dunya ko kya dekha? But we'll stop here. I went little extra time today because I started late. But we'll generally start at 7.30 and end at 8.30. We Grantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jaya. Srila Prabhupada ki jaya. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.